Hi, Brent Brehan, HTP Technical Field Trainer. I'm here with you today in our training facility. Um, we're going to review a uh, startup procedure um, for an Elite Premier. Um, we're going to go through some combustion testing, gas pressure testing, um, and review some of the things that we're going to need to do this. Um, so, of course, the first thing we're going to need is a, is a boiler to work on um, and a good place to get rid of the heat. We're going to have to run this appliance for, you know, 15, 20 minutes um, to get uh, our accurate numbers. So we want to be able to get rid of the heat. So, you're, first of all, you're, of course, like I said, you're going to need a unit, place to dump the heat, and some tools. First thing you can see here, we have an analyzer. Um, about the analyzer, uh, before you get it all plugged in and ready to go, you want to um, keep it outside, fresh air, let it zero out. Everything's going to work good for you. Bring it inside, get it hooked up, and you just don't want to get it set into the exhaust until you're ready to go. We also have a manometer, so we're going to look at incoming gas pressure, and I'm going to look at manifold pressure or offset pressure um, with this one. So um, with that being said, we're going to take a look at the layout of the gas valve. Um, and how to hook all this stuff up. So right now, we're operating off a of natural gas. So I have the gas valve shut off. Um, and right up here on the gas valve itself, we have two pressure taps. We have an in, in and out that we can measure our inlet pressure. We can measure our outlet pressure. Then we're going to have two adjustments that we can make. We have an adjustment for our offset or our manifold pressure. And then we have a throttle adjustment that's set down right here. So what I've done, is that from the manual that's provided with the boiler, it's printed out some of the information that you need to do this, so you have this. Um, and this is the layout of the gas valve, which will show you the inlet ports, the outlet ports, and your adjustments that are on there for all the models. Um, this is going to be important as we're going through this to, to review the actual combustion levels. Um, so like I said, this is provided in the manual or the app that you have for the phone, um, and certainly a laptop you can bring this up on. But you're going to want to have this with you so you can reference um, as far as ignition speeds where you need to be, and then, of course, the appropriate combustion levels. And again, it gives you a nice layout of the gas valve. So before I, you know, begin sampling combustion, I want to get my manometer set up on here and take a look at some inlet gas pressure testing. So the pressure range for this model is 3 and a half to 14 inches of water column uh, on the inlet side with no less than a half inch pressure drop upon ignition. So we're going to take a look uh, and see what we have. So um, what you're going to need is a, maybe a 3 30 seconds flat-headed screwdriver to get in here and access these taps. So we'll just go in here and open them up. Um, they're needle valves, so they only take a few turns to access. And you can read the pressures from there. So we've got the manometer on. And we're going to get our inlet pressure reading. And then we're going to get our manifold pressure manometer set on there. Uh, just bear in mind, if you don't have two manometers, certainly not a problem. You can transition back and forth between the two. Um, generally, we're going to record this on the startup procedure. We're going to go through an incoming gas and then a lockup check and just make sure that the regulators and everything's working the way we anticipate it to be. So again, the range is 3.5 to 14 inches. Um, so we're going to turn this gas on and see what we have. So we're sitting here at about 7.7 .7, uh, inches of water column. And we're going to read manifold pressure also. Manifold pressure is something that we read in low fire only and typically run in a negative. Um, and depending on the model, I mean, the gas you're using, that negative pressure can change. It is also listed on the side of the boiler for your reference as well if you're not 100% sure what the manifold pressure should be. So with that being said, I want to run it through a, you know, a simple test to take, take a look at my um, static and dynamic pressure. So static would just be sitting here, 7.7 .7 inches. We're going to run it through a test and see if I can um, adhere to that half-inch pressure drop. So to put this unit in service mode, um, it has an SIT control, a two-line 40-character LCD, um, so to access service mode, we're going to hold this enter button and the up arrow at the same time. And this is going to initiate the fan and get us set up to go through ignition. It does a pre-purge, and I'm going to watch my pressure at 7.7 .7 inches of water column. Then I'm going to run it through an ignition attempt. It's dropped down to about 7.3, 7 7.3. So um, we're well within our half-inch pressure drop. And then what I want to do is check, up the lock, check the lockup pressure. So I'm going to take it out of service mode while it was running, and then I'm going to watch my regulator and see where it goes. So we're still right back to the 7.7 .7 where we started. So I may run that through a few tests, um, especially on a new installation of regulators and meters and things like that. You may want to do that a few times just to make sure that the lockup um, is continuing to stay within its range. So with that being said, we're all set on our inlet gas pressure side. We know where we have. We're within our limits on the ignition. So um, what we want to do now is get this you know, model in back into test mode so we can begin to sample the combustion. Um, so as I mentioned, we want to leave the probe to do the sampling 
you know, outside of the exhaust until we have established combustion and we are running um, and flame is burning pretty good. And we can do two things. We can go to low fire or we can go to high fire. Um, so depending on what you have for a dump zone, you may want to get up to high fire, get that done first, and then go to low. I prefer to go to high fire first, get the overall, the maximum set, then drop it down to low and fine tune if necessary from there. So we're going to show you how to do that procedure. Um, so again, we're going to put this unit back in service mode. So we have enter and the up arrow at the same time. It's going to initiate the fan. It's going to do a pre-purge. Then it's going to set it to its ignition speed. It's going to give us a spark on the igniter. And then we're going to have ignition. The control will take three or four seconds to allow um, the flame proving portion of the control to take over. Uh, once that happens, it will allow you to take the fan speeds up and down and move them wherever you'd like. So for this particular test, as I mentioned, we're going to do high fire testing and we're going to do low fire testing. So now that I have uh, established combustion, I have a service run, so the unit is ready to let me take over it. So I'm going to take my analyzer, I'm going to get, get that ready, get this plug out of the way. This is where we're going to drill a hole. Um, if you have a model that has an excess port for you, you're good. If you have to drill a hole, what we do is drill a, a quarter inch tapped threaded hole so we can put a quarter inch PVC plug back in there at the end of the the testing that way that we can always get back in there pretty easy to do some more sampling and testing down the road for future service and things. So this is an adapter that'll come with your analyzer and of course that limits the excess air that's going to get in there. And what we want to do is get this set into the exhaust and we want to hit the back wall and then sort of pull it out into the middle of the stream so you get a nice accurate sample um, on your analyzer. Um, so again you want to make sure you get a nice tight fit up there everything to have flame established and then we start to sample. So what we're looking at now is we're going to go up to high fire. So as I mentioned on our chart, it's going to tell you the fan speeds and where you should be. So for this particular model, it should be around 5,150 RPM. So um, we're just about there. So at that rate in high fire and natural gas, we're looking for about eight and a half to 10 and a half percent on our CO2. Um, and we should be uh, probably in the 5 to 50 range in low fire. And then in high fire, um, you should be under 200 parts per million is what we're looking for on this. So we're going to see where we're at and make adjustments as necessary. So what I'm watching here on my analyzer is the CO2, and I'm watching the CO. So right now, I'm sitting at about 8.8% on the CO2 and about 70 and change on the, on the CO. So if I take a look at my range, uh, on my gas chart, uh, eight and a half to ten and a half in high fire, under 150 parts um, per million on the CO in high fire is where we want to be. So we're well within the range. We're right in there in the middle, somewhere around nine percent um, in high fire, and definitely within the parameters um, for CO. Uh, if I do need to make an adjustment, which I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to raise this up a little bit. I'm going to see if I can get this up to eight uh, to nine and a half percent on the CO2. Um, just to give me a little bit of room to move either way. It's uh, a little bit on the lower side, but however, within the parameters. Um, but for this particular video, we're going to show you how to make some adjustments on this valve. So um, what you're going to need to do this, you're going to need a 2.5 millimeter Allen key and a 4 millimeter Allen key. Um, these are um, going to be used to do the throttle adjustment on the 2.5 millimeter and a 4 millimeter to do your offset if need be. Um, and you're also going to need a flat screwdriver to access the manifold pressure. So since we're in high fire, we're going to use the throttle adjustment to raise this a little bit. So I'm going to get this set down inside. And on the throttle adjustments, it's internal variable orifice. So we're going to go counterclockwise, open that orifice up, add a little bit more fuel, and raise that level up just a little bit. So what we recommend, depending on what you're using for an analyzer, um, is to give it some small turns, maybe quarter to half a turn at a time, and allow your analyzer to sample the information and provide you with the correct you know, output. So uh, I'll start here by giving it maybe a, you know, a half a turn. And I'm going to keep an eye on my analyzer. And I'm going to see that um, just about up 9.1%, 90 parts per million. So we're going to see if we can raise this up again. We'll also note our incoming gas pressure too in high fire and low fire. So uh, we started off statically at 7.1 in high fire, we're up to 7.1. However, on our ignition, we were still within that well within that half inch drop. So I've made a slight adjustment onto the gas valve, giving it a little bit of time to sample. I got me up to about 9.2, 96 parts per million. So I think I'm going to give it a little bit more, maybe another half a turn. Uh, so that would give us about a full turn, you know, out so far. 
And again, we're going to give our analyzer some time to get the information um, and finalize it for me. And then after we have provided the high fire and we're, you know, we're good with high fire levels, we're going to bring it down into low fire. Um, and generally speaking, as you go from high to low, the range will fall right down with it. And adjustments in low fire aren't, aren't that common as much as high fire. So right now we're up to about 9.3 or so, a little over 100 on the parts per million. So we're, again, we're going to kind of give this another second here, just make sure it's not going to want to take off up on me. And then I'm going to give it another, you know, half a turn. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get that to come up just a little bit. So depending on the, the analyzer, like I said, it can take a little more or less time to do this. So you definitely want to have a good place to get rid of the heat because I mentioned you're going to need to keep this on in some cases for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe even a little longer, depending on what you're trying to do with it. So um, I've made some pretty good adjustments to it. I've got my CO up um, well within the range. CO2 is lifted up to about 9.3, 9.4. So again, want to give it a little bit of time, and I think I'm going to be okay with that. So again, on the throttle screw, internally variable orifice, as we go counterclockwise, we're allowing more fuel to come through the valve. And the end result, of course, is higher combustion levels or you know, raise them where we want them. Um, if I needed to go down, of course, I'm going to go counterclockwise, start to close that orifice and bring those levels down a little bit to where I need them. So we're sitting at about 120, 9.4, uh, 9.5 on the CO2. So we're right where exactly where I want it to be. This particular model has a printer built into it. Uh, most models either have a printer built into them or some sort of an infrared or a Bluetooth printer available for them. So you can print off these levels and you be allowed to, you don't leave it with the job so everybody has a reference point for this. So after I'm good with high fire, I'm going to take my down arrow key on here and I'm going to start to bring this into low fire. So low fire on this model uh, should be somewhere around 1500 RPM, I believe. Yep, 1500. So we'll keep bringing this down a little at a time until we get into our 1500 mark. And as we're doing this, we're going to watch our gas pressure you know, climb pretty close to where it was. So again, checking static gas pressure, I'm at 7.7 7 .7 inches, so not a huge change from ignition to even low fire. Taking a look over here, holding steady on the fan speed, and right now I'm watching the CO and CO2 come down. Um, the CO2 should change very slightly from high to low. So for our particular cause, we were close to 9.5. As I come down to here, um, I anticipate seeing somewhere around 9, 9.1. You can be the same number. You can be um, underneath it slightly. Uh, what you really want to avoid is having your low-fire CO2 above your high-fire CO2. If you see that, that's definitely going to require a manifold pressure adjustment. So we're sitting at about uh, 8.7, 8.6, a little bit lean in low-fire. So what I like to do is, is uh, show you how to adjust that a little bit and bring those levels up. I'm also looking at manifold pressure. Now, since this is such a sensitive number, I'll make sure that this is zeroed out and get this back on there. Uh, so what we're looking for on this particular model is negative 0 0.0102. 0 um, so it's, it's pretty much, you know, pretty close, but we're going to make some adjustments just to bring this up just so I can show you how to adjust that low side up a little bit. So to do that, you're going to need two things. You need a flat-headed screwdriver, of course, to get the little blind cap off of here get that out of the way so you can access the actual adjustment. Uh, so that's just a little flat screwdriver head that we'll put on there. And then we're, this is where we're going to need the 4 millimeter Allen key to make the adjustments here. So as I'm watching my manifold pressure, um, it's going a little bit too far negative. As I mentioned, negative 01, 02 is where we want to be. We're sitting up here around negative 05, 06, um, which would explain why we're a little bit lean on the CO2. So the manifold pressure works a little bit opposite of what a throttle adjustment would work. The manifold pressure is a, a plunger on the outlet side of the valve or a diaphragm that we're affecting the pressure that the fan can pull it open. So the farther you are negative, the harder the fan has to pull it open. And the, of course, the farther you are positive, the fan can pull it open and you're dumping a lot of fuel in there and raises those levels pretty high. So we're sitting a little low. We're a little, sitting at about 8.2 and about 39 parts per million. And well, we're pretty far into the, into the negative. So we're gonna give this a little bit of a turn clockwise. And we're talking maybe a quarter of a turn, eighth of a turn at a time, and try to bring this number down and bring this level up a little bit. So if I can get this closer to 0 0.0102 and get these levels up to where I'd like to see them. So again, in high, I was sitting around 9.4, 9.5. So I'm going to see if I can get this pretty close to that 9.1, 9.2 within that range, generally within about a you know half a percent of the, the high fire is what you want to be. So, so again, we're going to give that just a little bit of a turn. 
Take a look at the manometer. We can see that starting to change, come down a little bit. Um, and I'm going to keep a close eye on this CO2 specifically and, and see if I can get that up to where I'd like it to be. Um, if you, ha you don't have a manifold pressure manometer that can read those slight negatives, it's totally okay. We're certainly going to go with combustion. Um, but this will just give you another you know, visual to look at as we're trying to diagnose and set these things up. So I made a couple of small turns, and I've gotten my CO2 up to about 9.1. My CO is coming down pretty nicely, um, and this should definitely help a little bit with the efficiency as well. So, so 9.2, so pretty good. So maybe just a little bit more. I think if we give that a little bit more of an eighth of a turn, uh, we should see this 9.3 just come up just a little bit and maybe drop that CO back down just a little bit. So um, very small turns on the manifold pressure or the offset adjustment, as we call it. Um, if you have to go you know, more than a half a turn or so, uh, we may be looking at some other issues. So, um, But with those adjustments I've made, I'm sitting here at CO2 at 9.5. My CO is still coming down a little bit. It's at 22. You want to be under. Um, so we're going to maybe just go back just a little bit. Like I said, you can, you can see the sensitivity of this adjustment. It doesn't take a whole lot to get a reaction out of it. So that being said, we'll make a, just a slight final uh, adjustment. We're going to zero this back out again. If you are going to use one of these, like I said, they're it's such a sensitive number, you want to make sure that you're always kind of looking at this thing fresh and see where it is. So 9.6, 20 parts per million. Uh, we're slightly negative. That's my guess is going to change just a little bit. So we're going to go just a little more and see if we can get this to come down. I think we can get it down just a little bit under under 9.5 or 9.5, I think we'll be okay. So, so again, this all takes a little bit of time um, to get done. So you want to make sure, again, you have plenty of time to, to dump this and get rid of the heat. So here we go. Made a slight adjustment. Got it down to 9.5. Still sitting around 20, 21 parts. Uh, gas pressure is okay. My manifold pressure is sitting negative 0 0.01. Again, right where I wanted to. The CO2 is going to come down just a little bit. So um, this is a, you know, a pretty good setup when you see the high fire and the CO2 and the low fire CO2 very close together. Um, so again, we're going to print this off in low fire, and then what we're going to do after that is we're going to pull the analyzer back out of the, the port in the exhaust, and I'm going to run it through an ignition cycle um, and just make sure we get a good, nice, smooth ignition off of this. So I think I'm satisfied with the combustion. So again, I'm going to print these off, um, typically print a couple copies off so we can leave one, take one with us for the startup report that we're going to do, um, and then we're going to be okay with this. So we're going to take it out of service mode to do that. We're going to push the up and down arrows at the same time. And it's going to go into a, a fan post purge, and clear the heat exchanger. And in the meantime, while it's doing that, I'm going to get my analyzer out of the exhaust. I'm going to let it purge here for a couple of seconds. And then I'm going to initiate um, service mode again and just light it off, go through an ignition cycle. So again, with the enter and the up arrow, we're going to hit the ignition cycle. It's going to come on. It's going to do a pre-purge to drop itself down into its ignition RPM, and we're going to have combustion. So there we go. So now it's back on, uh, running in normal mode, and uh, all combustion is set up, gas pressures. Um, so I do hope this helps in, with the startup and operation of this product.